Johan, parking, always in a complex, this is an issue. Well, I, when I looked at the property, the estate agent told me, this is your garage and this is your parking. And um, so when I stop on that parking and they tell me, listen, you're constantly stopping on a guest parking, you now start to pay for that. Or if I've got an undercover parking or garage, which I thought was mine, but it's not mine, why can they take this away from me or move it? All right, this has been, uh, I think, the topic of a lot of battles in the past, um, especially in those complexes that have very tight parking restrictions or limited parking for purposes of visitors and the like. Uh, we've got to remember that um, if we step away from garages, which normally form part of the unit and might form part of the unit or might be reserved by means of an exclusive use, right, when we look at parking in front of a unit or visitors parking, these specific parkings or spaces normally have the character of being common property. So they are not necessarily allocated to the relevant owner of the unit. And therefore it belongs to all the members, uh, registered owners who are members of the body corporate uh, in accordance with their participation quota. Now the participation quota is nothing else than a percentage of my unit in relation to the total development. So if I have 100 squares of 1,000 squares, I own 10%. Um, and that is the part that I basically own in terms of the common areas or the parking itself. Now, you do get different types of common properties and the common property can be exclusive. And that is normally reserved by means of a certificate of exclusive use area, and it is then ceded, not transferred, but ceded to the relevant registered owner. So that basically says that that portion of the common property is specifically allocated to that relevant unit. And then it basically protects my right. I can then be the exclusive person who parks there and nobody can chase me away because I have received a session of that relevant common area. Um, and that normally has an, uh, an influx with regards to the levies that you have to pay with regards to your property as well, because immediately when you reserve something for yourself exclusively, then you have to pay a levy um, for that luxury at the end of the day. That brings especially, us to the Sorry, especially sorry. if that was on communal property and you reserve it for yourself, you need to pay a levy for that. Correct. Bringing us back to the uh, to the visitors parking. Visitors parking is normally not allocated at all. So that is just general common property that belongs to the body corporate, and that can be allocated and reallocated as they deem fit. You know, so even though I have become accustomed to park on the visitors parking next to my unit because it's close, it doesn't give me the exclusive right to do so. And if that is starting to cause a nuisance or it infringes upon the rights of the other owners, then I can obviously be brought to book in that regard. Now, again, coming back to our conduct rules, uh, part of the conduct and management rules of the body corporate, it doesn't actually tell us much about parking, but it does have a regulation five or subsection five that basically says the owner, an occupier of a specific unit may not park a vehicle or allow a vehicle to stand or permit a visitor to park on a stand or any part thereof of the common property um, of the bay that is not allocated to that specific section or in such a way obviously that causes a nuisance or an infringement upon the use of any other owner. So we've got to make that huge distinguish um, and between the exclusive use areas reserved for a relevant owner and its unit or those that belong to the body corporate and is practically a free for all use. Um, in those specific uh, instances, one has to be um, very vigilant and you've got to have good neighborliness because you know it's not going to um, help if you utilize that exclusively. We had numerous instances where people take their caravans and they park it on a permanent basis on the visitor's parking. Um, to the detriment of the others and obviously aggravating the body corporate and they have to take steps uh, against such uh, owners. So you've got to make sure what the character of that relevant area is and whether you do have the right to exclusively use it for yourself or you have to share it with the rest of the body corporate. So if I would walk into a complex and someone would tell me, listen, this is your parking and this is your garage. One of the things that I need to note in a contract is 
It needs to be on the contract stating that this parking or this garage is sold with the unit, um, although it's on communal property. And then if you want to request further proof of this, you're more than welcome because this was probably decided on AAGM with a resolution and there was it was documented some, somewhere in the history of the complex where this was stated, this garage, this parking belongs to this person. If it's on communal property, you've got the exclusive use rights to use this, park your um, caravan if you want to, but this is your parking and you pay levy on that. That's the one thing. It's not as easy as I walk into the complex and I see, oh, this was the one that the estate agent told me was mine. It's not necessarily yours. You never get sure. sold a parking in a garage if it's not numbered correctly. You would walk into complexes if you keep your eyes peeled you would see this it would either have no nothing written on the parking and that automatically means that it's visitors or there would be a number or it says belonging to flat number a unit and then it writes the unit there so then you know okay this is really allocated to me and if you want extra proof then proof can be provided if it belongs to you but if it's not belonging to you if it's communal property visitors you cannot own something because it's on communal property. I own 10% of the communal property because I am body corporate. This is my percentage use. You cannot do that because everyone is entitled to that space. And, it, and it's in the beginning, you said it, you can, it's the communal area belongs to every person in the complex. But it states also that it's the undivided part. It's not a specific part that you can say, this little block belongs to this flat and this block, it, the communal area belongs to everyone and it's for use for everyone. So you cannot own it just because it's by your unit. Correct. I think what's very important, Amaraz, is that we just have to make a couple of interesting comments. The first comment is, is that we've got different types of sectional title acts that govern different types of complexes. Prior to 1986, uh, we had the 71 or 1971 sectional title act. Now, in terms of that act, there wasn't something like an exclusive use area. It wasn't practiced to reserve these specific um, exclusive use areas. So if you have a building that was erected prior to 1971, you will most probably have an instance where you don't have a separate certificate reserving the exclusive use of that stand or that parking area for your use. That only came into effect in 1986. The way in which they reserved the exclusive right for a parking bay or a common area um, prior to 1986 was by means of a body corporate resolution. So that is normally filed on your sectional title file in the deeds office or at CSOS. And if you peruse that, you'll get a general uh, resolution taken on a specific date that says parking bay number two is now allocated henceforth to the registered owner of unit number one and so forth and it's important that will suffice as proof that I've got the exclusive right for purposes of that use. Um, after 86 you obviously get a separate certificate and that would be ample proof and that can be drawn in the deeds office to prove that you have the exclusive right, which is reserved and ceded to yourself. But like you said, in character, all of this specific land remains common property, whether the common property is exclusively reserved for my right, or whether it's a free for all, and all the members of the body corporate can utilize it according to their participation quota, that is something that can be determined. And I would strongly advise that purchasers do a due diligence with regards to that before they sign the offer to purchase and obviously during the process to make sure that they get session of what needs to come to them. The one thing that I also want to mention is in terms of parking being on communal property. So for instance, it's an undercover parking and you were parked closest to your unit and that's why you bought the property. Now when you move in, you saw the sticker of the undercover parking being moved to another space and you, but this was my parking. And why did you move me without my consent? I bought it because of this parking. You need to know that when a, when you have this undercover parking and it's on communal property, it's not exclusively allocated to you, but you are sold a undercover parking and they move it. The only thing that the complex need to do is they need to place you in the same position 
that you were in if they want to move you. So if you still have an undercover parking, but it's just slightly further for you to walk, then they are allowed to do this. Yes. Well, especially in those instances, like you rightfully say, where it's a free for all, it's a visitor's parking, or they've got a numerous amount of parkings that they loosely allocate to a relevant unit. Like you say, they are probably entitled to chop and change and give you another specific number or a parking allocated to you, um, depending on how the layer of the land basically goes. But um, if it is an exclusive use area that has been ceded to you and is specifically numbered, that is obviously reserved for life. You know, they can't change those unless there is a specific procedure that they have to go through, which is quite cumbersome. But uh, again, I think that due diligence has to disclose what is the character of this relevant common area. Is it just a free for all, uh, like a tennis court, for example, or swimming pool in the complex that can be used by all the members and its visitors? Or is it something that is exclusively allocated? And this we normally get in the event of gardens as well. You know, a lot of the sectional title schemes that are developed purely just build a wall around the garden area. But that is not necessarily reserved exclusively for my own use or right. Um, it's just for purposes of privacy that the developer um, erected a wall around the garden. Um, but you can issue a certificate of exclusive use areas reserving G1 or garden one or garden two and then ceding it to the relevant client. Again, that due diligence is basically the alpha and the omega. You have to go through that process to see what is it that I'm actually buying? Am I buying communal rights or am I buying a free for all, which I know probably will be preserved, but there is a risk that it can be infringed upon at, um, at a certain stage. Thank you, Yuan. Thank you very much. Keep well.